Okay, so let's finish up the examples. Um, this is for a three-phase system, and you guys aren't going to be required to, you know, be able to do a three-phase system on a on an exam. It's it's pretty tedious as far as the calculations. As you know, single phase is doable, but three phase gets kind of hard. I just want to go through this because you know in the future you guys are going to be modeling cable systems. And so you at least had needed to see it before and kind of know where these numbers come from. And so let's suppose I've got an underground system and it's going to be a 15 kV class system. And what I've um, going to be doing in this case is I'm going to be assuming I've got a phase conductor 1 aught and concentric neutral of 14 WG with six strands. And so I'm basically, we're basically telling you the configuration information. Um, the other thing is I've got three different cables. All right, so, excuse me. I got three different cables. And so the way this is gonna look is I'm gonna have phase A, I'm gonna have phase B, I'm gonna have phase C. And the construction is such that these cables are gonna be 7.5 inches apart. which means that the A and the B, A, sorry, the A and the C phases are going to be 15 inches apart. All right, and we'll assume the earth resistivity is 100 meter ohms. All right, so we've got um, ties of ground between the concentric neutral and earth at both ends of the cable. So we're going to use some, some of the tables in Kirsting's textbook to come up with the values. And once we have these values, then we're going to compare this to the values you can you can compute in, in the windmill program. So anyway, let's get the one out numbers first. And so for the one out numbers, what you see here is that this is gonna have 19 strands that make up the one out. You got these various sort of um, diameters. You got the outside diameter. You got the diameter of the screen. You've got the diameter of the insulation. Uh, so this outside diameter is going to be 1.06. Um, as far as the copper neutral in this case, we've got six strands of number 14, and uh, we got a ampacity of 175. So you know these are basically the important numbers that we're going to need in this case is we're going to need the fact that we got these six neutral strands of number 14. We have this outside diameter of 1.06 and we've got a one odd. This is going to be a one third neutral construction in this case. Uh, so what this we're assuming is we're going to have a fairly balanced system where we don't have to have that much current going through the neutral wire. Uh, also too, we'll just assume the dielectric constants 2.3 because we're not told otherwise. All right, so then we, we go to the phase conductor and we pull the values out. So you could see that we've got an outside diameter of 0.368 inches. Uh, this translates to 0 0.0307 feet. The GMR for the phase conductor is 0 0.0111 feet. And then the phase conductor resistance is 0 0.97 ohms per, per mile. Um, you could also convert this in terms of a thousand feet as well. And then for the neutral, the number 14 wire, um, basically we have a resistance of 0 0.0641. I'm sorry, resistance of 14.8722, which seems kind of high, but we've got six of these in parallel. And so this gives us a net um, resistance of 2.4787 ohms per mile. This seems like a really high value, and, but if I have my load pretty balanced, then I really shouldn't have too much current going through here. So what this is going to do, it's going to make for a larger zero sequence impedance, um, but it shouldn't really impact me if I, if I have a fairly balanced load. Um, diameter, the neutral conductor in this case is 0 0.0641. Uh, in inches, I can convert that to feet. And then the GMR for the neutral conductor is given here, 0 0.00208 feet. So now that I got all these different terms, 
then I can calculate the equivalent GMR numbers. Um, so I got the GMR for the strand. I've got six strands. Um, if I want to get this D neutral term, I take the outside diameter, subtract off the diameter of a strand, divide by two, um, divide through by 12 to get this in terms of feet, and I get 0 0.0415 feet. DPN is the distance between the center of the phase conductor to the center of the concentric neutral. Uh, and so once I've got this D neutral term, I could divide that through by um, two as well. And, you know, I get the same term here. Um, I'm not sure why I did it that way. Uh, GMR for the phase is 0 0.0111 feet. And then if you want the GMR for the neutral, you have to kind of use this complicated formula again. Basically, we use the um, the root to the power of six in order to do the calculation. We get 0 0.0340 feet. Now, what I've got is I've got this system where I've got these laid out flat. So the construction is going to look something like this. Where I got 7.5 feet. And now what I have to do is I have to calculate all these various inner wire um, inter cable distances, right? So between phases A and B, or B and C and A and N, or B and C, if I'm talking about combinations involving just the phase or just the neutral conductor, the 7.5 inches translates to 0.625 feet. Um, for this distance between phases A and C, for either the, just I'm talking about the phase conductors or the neutral conductor, that's 1.25 feet. Um, if I'm talking about the individual cables and the distance between the concentric neutral and the phase conductor, that's 0 0.0415 feet. And then for these combinations where I'm talking about distances between a phase A and B or A and C, and between a phase conductor and a neutral, then I've got to use this more complicated formula right here. And, and you can see in both these cases, if, if I'm calculating um, like an AB versus an AC term, the numbers here are very, very similar to what I would have if I just looked at the distances between like phase conductors. And so it probably wouldn't make a much difference if I use these more complicated formulas or not. Um, have the effect of the earth. Again, we're using 100 ohm meters, so D sub B is 2788.5 feet. Uh, and now what this slide does is this summarizes all the different distances. So again, I've got two wires here, I've got two wires here, I've got two wires here. It's a six wire system, which means when I calculate my impedances, I'm gonna get a six by six matrix. And I, I basically, I'm gonna use the same formulas as I use for overhead, just like before for three phase. So now what you do is you, you calculate all these individual terms. And what I'm getting in this case is I'm getting like ZAPAP, ZAPBP, and um, what this is going to give me is this is going to give me, um, I got to get the phase value for the resistance. I got to get the Carson's correction in here. I'm going to have the J.1213 times the natural log of DM, DE over the GMR for the phase. Um, this is going to give me 1.0653 plus J1.5083 ohms per mile. Um, I've also got this expression right here for uh, between A and B for the individual phases. Um, for the off diagonal terms, I got the Carson's correction term for the resistance, uh, the J.1213 times the natural log of DE over this distance in here. So again, it's just kind of like doing these calculations for overhead, uh, except you're, you're just doing this for, for equivalent cable terms. So anyway, when you do all these, these different number crunchings, then what you're going to end up with is you're going to end up with this matrix where this matrix 
is going to be six by six and it's going to be symmetric around the, the diagonal. So what we want to do in this case is we want to get rid of um, basically the neutral terms and now we got three equivalent neutral conductors, how we do something like that. Well, what you need to do is you need to do a crone reduction, but now this gets a little bit more involved because now this involves a crone reduction where you're going to have um, you're going to have basically three by three mat sub matrices to work with. And so let's call this three by three Z11, this three by three Z12, this would be Z21, this would be Z22. If we do our crone reduction, what we have to do is we have to do this in terms of matrix operations. So this is where you want to use a program like MATLAB. And if you do this, what this is going to reduce down to, it's going to reduce down to this this three by three. And so once you've gotten down to this particular point, um, then this would be the, the um, this would be the set of equations that you would use um, or the terms that you would use in, in a program like, like a windmill. You could also calculate the per phase admittance terms. And so Again, assuming that the electric field is confined within each cable, we're just going to have self capacitances. You're not going to have mutual capacitances. Um, you got this pretty involved formula right here because we had the concentric neutral wires. Uh, and so anyway, I'm not going to read off each term in here, but what we're ending up in this particular case is we're ending up with an equivalent admittance of um, 67.08 micro Siemens per, per mile. Uh, times J. So anyway, if you want to verify this in, in windmill, what you could do is you could build an equivalent system where in the overhead lecture, I had an overhead line. Now in this case, I'm putting in the underground cable. And then what you would do is you would set this up where you would have just like you have for overhead, you'd put in information for phases A, B, and C, and then you'd also put in your construction. This is your distance information. And note in this case that what we're doing is we're putting in information about the cable, each individual cable, and this cable is designed for one third neutral. And then if you go into the cable definition, then you can start to put all this information in about What's the phase conductor resistance? What's the GMR for the phase conductor? Uh, you could put in here, this is a concentric neutral. You could have some information about the equivalent resistance for the concentric neutral. So this is basically the number of the um, resistance per strand divided by the number of strands. Note in this case that these resistance has to be put in terms of a thousand feet. This is why I did a thousand feet before. And then, um, what you put in, you'd put in like your outside diameter, your diameter in the neutral, your outside diameter of the cable insulation, et cetera. You could put, a, put your diameter of the conductor in here and you can put in your dielectric constant. These are very similar to the terms, you know, we were using in the by hand example. So you get this from your cable, um, cable data and then you would put in your distance information and basically what you see is you can see we've got 7.5 inches between adjacent conductors. I've gone ahead and just assumed that this is located 36 inches underground. Um, it actually doesn't really make any difference what that distance is underground because nothing that we calculated was dependent on that. So I just simply just kind of threw a number in there and you can see in Millsoft, it kind of shows you graphically what this would look like. And then when you look at the impedance tab then on the underground cable after you run a voltage drop study, then what you'll see is you'll see these values in here. And what you'll see is that these kind of match up with what we what we calculated by hand. So this isn't, isn't something I expect you to be able to do by hand. This is a pretty tedious process. I mean, you should be able to do this for one concentric neutral at least to kind of know how to do the basic calculations. 
Um, but these are all the different steps you would need to go through uh, in order to come up with these parameters. Most, mostly what I've seen for like utility cases is a lot of utilities would not be calculating cable parameters through entering all this raw information in. It's, it's a, actually a rather risky process where you just get num one number in wrong and it messes up all your cable values. And so mostly what they do, and I'll show you how to do this later on, is that they would either enter these values in using what we call ZABC model or ZSM model. And what that model does is it enables you to just enter these types of values in directly. And so you would have some expert in your company work this out or you just simply go to the cable vendor and say, hey, you know, I, I want to get these parameters for this sort of construction. And usually these cable vendors will just give you these values. So I've very rarely seen where utilities would actually be calculating these all from scratch all the time. Uh, a lot of times they would just simply have this model worked out ahead of time. They would just simply put in the parameters in directly. And I have to worry about some issues with the convergence, with the um, getting the numbers entered in properly. So anyway, if you want some more information about this, you know, if you go to Kirsting's book, he basically goes to exactly all these same sort of calculations. A lot of this material kind of matches up with Kirsting's book, but this would also be kind of a good source to go into as well. So a, a much more complicated lecture than the others and that there's a lot of confusing terms and stuff in here, but just, just kind of focus on kind of trying to understand like that single phase example as far as coming up with the cable parameters um, and focus more on the concentric neutral case. And they say, I'll, I'll probably just have one problem on the homework on this. Um, but again, and, you know, this is just kind of showing where these types of numbers come from and then how much work you have to kind of go through to, to get these particular values. <laughs>